For decades, we thought we understood the decline of our closest ancient relatives, the Neanderthals. We were wrong. Groundbreaking research published in Nature Communications in 2025 has shattered our previous understanding, revealing a far more dramatic and complex story. Using cutting-edge 3D imaging and advanced geometric analysis, researchers have uncovered a stunning truth by examining the semicircular canals of Neanderthal skulls, spanning nearly 400,000 years. Like a time capsule preserved in bone, these structures tell a story that contradicts everything we thought we knew about Neanderthal decline. The research reveals a remarkable period of Neanderthal flourishing that challenges our traditional narrative. Contrary to the image of steadily declining populations, Neanderthals maintained robust and diverse populations for hundreds of thousands of years. The Krapina population, dating back to 130,000 to 120,000 years ago, showed remarkable diversity, suggesting a golden age of Neanderthal success. This evidence points to thriving communities capable of adapting and evolving, painting a picture of a species at its peak rather than in decline. However, the study unveiled an unexpected twist in the Neanderthal story. Instead of a gradual decline, they experienced a dramatic late-stage population crash. This revelation overthrows decades of scientific assumptions about their gradual deterioration. The evidence suggests a sudden and devastating population bottleneck about 120,000 years ago, fundamentally changing our understanding of their extinction process. The anatomical findings are equally fascinating. The discovery of unique inner ear characteristics sets Neanderthals apart in ways previously unknown. Their thicker and more voluminous semicircular canals suggest fundamental differences in how they moved and perceived their world. These distinct adaptations provide new insights into Neanderthal physiology and behavior. The timeline revealed by this research tells a compelling story across three distinct periods. The early Neanderthals, from the Cima de los Huesos site dating back approximately 430,000 years ago, showed remarkable stability. The middle period, represented by the Krapina population, marked the peak of Neanderthal diversity and success. However, the late period, 64,000 to 40,800 years ago, showed a dramatic reduction in variation, suggesting a population in crisis. The evidence suggests that Neanderthal extinction wasn't a simple tale of gradual decline and replacement. Instead, they maintained large diverse populations until relatively recently in their history, making their eventual disappearance even more mysterious and dramatic. As mentioned before, a key finding in studying their semicircular canals is their notably thicker and more voluminous structure. This robust build gives Neanderthal inner ears a unique profile, differing significantly from the thinner and more uniformly shaped canals observed in Homo sapiens. Additionally, specific proportions within the Neanderthal inner ear highlight further distinctions. The anterior and posterior semicircular canals, responsible for detecting rotational movement along certain axes, are unexpectedly small relative to their lateral canal. This feature contrasts with the general balance of canal sizes seen in modern humans and earlier hominins. Perhaps most intriguingly, the vertical canals exhibit a unique clockwise rotational shift when viewed from the side. This unusual positioning, combined with their distinctive proportions, provides researchers with markers that are almost exclusively Neanderthal. What makes these features particularly striking is their apparent lack of a functional explanation. Typically, changes in anatomy, especially in structures as critical as the inner ear, are tied to environmental adaptations or shifts in locomotor behavior. Yet there is no evidence that Neanderthal's distinctive features offered them an advantage in balance or movement. This points toward genetic drift or other non-adaptive evolutionary processes as the driving force behind these traits. Such changes may reflect the small or isolated populations Neanderthals often lived in, where random genetic variations could become more prevalent. Even subtle anatomical details like inner ear shapes act as valuable clues to their population history. The Neanderthal lineage exhibits a fascinating trajectory, as illustrated through three key chronological groups defined by their unique characteristics, yet interconnected by a common lineage. The earliest of these groups were the Cima de los Huesos population, discovered in the Atapuerca Mountains, Spain. These early Neanderthals show a mix of traits, some primitive and others resembling later Neanderthals. This group represents an early stage in Neanderthal history, reflecting a period when their physical form was still closely linked to earlier hominins. Moving forward in time, the Krapina population, dated to around 130,000 to 120,000 years ago and found in Croatia, exhibits a transitional phase in Neanderthal development. 
these individuals display high morphological diversity, emerging during a period of population stability and growth. This diversity might indicate genetic mixing with other hominin populations and other favourable conditions, which may have enabled regional adaptations. Crepina marks a peak in variation within the Neanderthal clade, offering insights into their adaptability and resilience during this epoch. The late Neanderthals, spanning roughly 64,000 to 40,000 years ago, were more uniform in their traits compared to their ancestors. Found across Europe and Eurasia, this group reflects the classic Neanderthal morphology, characterized by thicker semicircular canals and the pronounced clockwise rotation. However, they also exhibit a drastic drop in variation, likely due to a population bottleneck. This marked reduction is closely linked to dramatic changes during the middle to late Pleistocene, a period marked by increasingly harsh and unstable conditions in Europe and Western Asia. These shifts likely strained Neanderthal populations, reducing their numbers and leading to isolated groups with limited genetic diversity. This bottleneck also coincides with evidence of population turnovers. The reduction in diversity among late Neanderthals suggests that small fragmented populations were less able to maintain the wide range of traits found in their predecessors. This lack of variation not only reflects their genetic constraints, but also hints at the reduced adaptive potential of these isolated groups. The bottleneck likely contributed to the vulnerability of Neanderthals as they faced mounting environmental and demographic pressures. Smaller population sizes made them more susceptible to extinction from external challenges, including competition with modern humans who were expanding into their territories. Furthermore, this inability would have contributed to their eventual disappearance. The timing of population changes in Neanderthals provides key insights, and this study challenges long-held assumptions about early demographic events. Traditional theories had suggested that Neanderthals experienced severe population bottlenecks early, around 300,000 to 200,000 years ago, leading to a prolonged decline in genetic diversity. However, this research contradicts such narratives, showing instead that Neanderthal populations exhibited stability and relative diversity for much of their early and middle history. Evidence from the study indicates that major demographic shifts occurred only after 120,000 years ago, aligning with findings from recent ancient DNA analyses. Before this period, populations such as those represented by the Cima de los Huesos and Crapina groups were not only stable, but also exhibited great variation. As mentioned earlier, this diversity points to larger population sizes than previously believed, and suggests a robust capacity to adapt to varied environmental conditions. It undermines the idea of long-term population instability during the Middle Pleistocene, revealing a more resilient and interconnected demographic structure across Neanderthals in Europe and Asia. The turning point appears to arise with increasingly drastic and harsher environmental conditions in the late Pleistocene. About 120,000 years ago, the real decline began. DNA evidence supports this, showing reduced genetic diversity in their later phases, possibly exacerbated by their increasingly fragmented populations. These findings have pivotal implications for understanding Neanderthal extinction. From temperate zones to harsher Ice Age conditions, Neanderthals demonstrated remarkable adaptability. Their sophisticated tool use and social organization likely supported this environmental resilience, enabling them to establish successful communities in diverse ecological niches. Another key factor contributing to Neanderthal diversity was their population interconnectedness, which was earlier obscure. Genetic evidence suggests that rather than existing as entirely isolated groups, Neanderthals maintained some degree of gene flow between communities spread across Europe and Western Asia. This connectivity helped preserve genetic richness, allowing populations to recover after local declines and maintain flexibility in adapting to environmental changes. The presence of diverse traits in transitional populations like the Crapina Neanderthals reflects this exchange of genetic material. Traditional models of Neanderthal evolution have often followed a simple, linear trajectory, suggesting gradual development from earlier ancestors to their later, classic, form. However, this study challenges that oversimplified view, offering evidence for a more intricate demographic and evolutionary process. Instead of a straightforward timeline, the findings indicate that Neanderthal populations experienced multiple phases of development, driven by complex dynamics. Key among these dynamics is the interplay between gradual and abrupt changes. For instance, some traits, like the overall robustness of the Neanderthal skeleton, likely evolved slowly over time, through cumulative genetic changes. But other features, particularly within the inner ear, hint at more rapid shifts. 
the distinctive clockwise rotation of the semicircular canals and other derived traits seem to have emerged suddenly, likely tied to bottlenecks and genetic drift in small populations. Such changes reflect the influence of non-linear processes, where isolation or population crashes catalyzed specific morphological traits. One of the most significant takeaways is the altered perspective on population dynamics. Neanderthals were not static or overly uniform, as once believed. Instead, they were diverse, interconnected and robust to face fluctuations in their living condition and maintain this trend till the very end of their eventual decline. These findings highlight the significance of geographic and demographic fragmentation as crucibles for evolutionary experimentation. Small, disconnected groups, while vulnerable to extinction, also acted as hotspots of genetic reshuffling, inadvertently shaping species-wide characteristics. Applying similar techniques to fossils of under-researched species or time periods could expose hidden patterns of evolution that conventional approaches miss. For instance, insights into how distinct populations simultaneously preserved ancient traits and developed novel adaptations could help reconstruct forgotten demographics of early hominins. Altogether, this study doesn't just add to Neanderthal lore. It challenges the very blueprint of how we define evolution, pushing us to consider the roles of fluctuation, fragmentation, and resilience as central to survival, not simply as outcomes of decline. It underscores that Neanderthals were far more dynamic than once assumed, enriching the larger story of human history and its myriad twists and turns.